What's going on YouTube? Josh here checking in, back with another episode of the Research Review Series. Today we're actually going to be looking at a study uh, that pertained to diet, and this is coming from JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association by Johnson and colleagues. It's called Comparison of Weight Loss Among Named Diet Programs in Overweight and Obese Individuals, a Meta-Analysis. So as the title implies, this study is a meta-analysis, meaning that they essentially looked at a variety of different studies, compiled the results, and tried to get something meaningful from that. In this particular instance, they did what's called a network meta-analysis, which is basically a fancy way of doing a meta-analysis that allows you to look at more studies and allows you to hopefully provide some more links um, to the data that's presented in the various studies. So all in all, they ended up using uh, 48 randomized controlled trials that looked at a variety of uh, weight loss interventions with named diet programs. So some of the names that you might, might sound familiar to you would be like the Atkins diet, the Zone diet, the Jenny Craig diet, etc., etc. Essentially what the researchers did is they broke up these various named diets into three different categories. Low carbohydrate, moderate macronutrients, and low fat. All this was based on a percentage of your total calories. Now what's interesting is they considered the low carbohydrate group anything under 40% of your total kilocalories which most low-carb dieters would say is pretty outrageous. Most low-carb dieters tend to say low carbohydrate is, you know, 10 or 15 percent or even less than that of your total cal calories. So the fact that they're including things like the zone diet um, as part of their, quote, low-carb is a little bit interesting and rather unusual. Uh, in the end, I don't think that really, you know, takes away from the results of the study. So anyway, those are the way that they basically categorized it, and what they looked at is uh, how the weight loss compared at 6 months and 12 months. Essentially, those were the, the primary endpoints of the study. So what did they find? Well, in the low carbohydrate group at 6 months follow-up, when they pooled all the data, they saw a weight loss of just over 8 kilograms. It was like 8.7 kilograms and for the low fat group it was just about 8 kilograms. So although the the low carbohydrate group was about you know a, a little less than a full kilogram greater weight loss at that point you have to keep in mind that due to the statistical analysis they're basically the same amount and also note that you know less than one kilogram of weight loss isn't really clinically significant. So for the purposes of argument's sake, it's basically 8 kilograms weight loss for both low fat and the low carbohydrate group, which seemed to have the, the greatest results on, uh, on weight loss at that period. Now at 12 months, you know, so a full year after the intervention was started, they also looked at these results and what they found is basically an exact same amount of weight loss, more or less, between the low fat and the low carb group. And that was just about a little more than seven kilograms. So what's important to note is that the weight loss was basically the same between both groups regardless of the macronutrient composition and at 12 months the weight loss was slightly less, about one kilogram less than what you saw at six months which is generally what we see in diet programs where people you know maybe go off the bandwagon a little bit and they uh, you know maybe not be as good as, as they were initially to gain back some of the weight. They also, in this study, ended up looking at some, some factors that would perhaps modify these results. So they looked at both behavioral support and exercise, and suffice it to say that you have greater weight loss when you have both behavioral support and exercise. I'm not going to delve into that data because that wasn't really analyzed sufficiently in my opinion, so I don't want to um, you know, detract from the primary results of the study. So in general, what are the limitations of the study, and can we use this at all? So basically, you know, the, one of the major limitations of a meta-analysis is essentially you're only as good as the research that's being, being studied, right? So if the research that they were looking at had inherent biases, if there was missing data, etc., then it's really hard to compile meaningful results from that. In general, the fact that they were using a network meta-analysis is nice because they were able to look at a greater amount of studies. The issue is that sometimes you can end up creating connections that are not necessarily present in the data. So that's a potential concern. One thing that's really important to know, I think, is that in the analysis, they never looked at adherence, right? So what that is, to, that is to say, they were never able to analyze were the subjects in the individual studies actually complying with the, with the given diet, right? Was the weight loss a result of simply following a certain macronutrient 
percentage or was it the fact that it was easier for them to follow the diet? And finally, one last thing to note is that there was a very limited amount of studies that looked specifically at moderate macronutrient composition. The vast majority of the studies were actually low carbohydrate studies, and that's just a matter of what the present research shows. But in the end, the conclusion from the study is basically that it's a matter of energy in and energy out. This is something that's kind of goes back and forth in the fitness and nutrition area, and especially as it pertains to the regular population. You know, what is the best diet for weight loss? And the answer is, whichever diet you will follow. Because in the end, it's just about calories in versus calories out. Of course, there's a complex metabolic adaptation to dieting and exercise, etc., etc. But in the end, if you are consuming less calories than you're burning, however you choose to do that, whether that's low fat, moderate macronutrients, low carb, whatever suits your lifestyle, whatever you can adhere to, whatever you can keep up for the rest of your life is the diet that you should try and maintain, especially if you are trying to lose weight, right? If you're obese or overweight. So that's basically the research, guys. I wanted to present something that was kind of more relevant to the general population, not just the fitness and, uh, and nutrition kind of people who tend to watch these videos. So I hope you guys found this video informative. If you guys have any questions, please be sure to comment below. If you like the video, give it a like. If you're not a subscriber already, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.